This podcast is brought to you by LMU Munich. Hello, everybody. Uh, please welcome Stefan with his talk about gating native with Python and warm applause. Yep. So, hi, everyone. Um, Stefan Biene. Uh, I'm happy to see so many faces uh, here today. Um, so the topic I'm, I'm, I'm presenting today is uh, Cython. Um, I'm actually one of the Cython core developers. Uh, so I hope there's something to learn for you. Um, uh, so I'll start with something different though. I'll give you a bit of about some background uh, about myself. Uh, I've been a Python developer and advocate since uh, 2002. It's for quite a while already. Um, an open source developer, uh, do consulting and training uh, in that area, so uh, mostly for Cython, I guess, uh, Cython trainings uh, in, in, in Leipzig. I don't, know if, uh, don't think Mike is here, but at the um, Python Academy in Leipzig. Um, uh, I've written most of LXML. Um, some of you may, might know Looper, uh, Looper integration in, in Python. Uh, so that's the open source development I'm doing. And uh, Actually, most of the time I'm, I'm uh, working for Scooby, we're one of the sponsors, or so booth out, uh, outside. Um, we're an ebook subscription service, so um, if you know Spotify, we're the same thing for ebooks. So if you like reading, uh, we are a service, we, and we totally change the way you read. Right? So you start using Scooby, and you read more, I can tell you. So I've, I've never read so many books as in the last four years since I joined Scooby. Um, we have an app, so you can read it on. on um, Android and iOS, uh, lots and lots and lots of books, all publisher titles, so really cool books, um, and more books than you could ever read, right? Um, so why is Cython then something that's, uh, that's relevant for you, that should be relevant? Well, we're actually using uh, a lot of tools in, uh, at Scooby that are written in Cython, you maybe too. Um, who is sure that uh, you've never used any tool that's written in Cython? Okay, like no one, right? <laughs> um, who's, who's ever used Cython themselves? Okay, that's about one third, I think. Um, so these days, actually many uh, C library wrappers, are accelerator modules in Python, um, and definitely tons and tons of scientific Python tools are written in Cython, or at least use some kind of, of Cython module somewhere. Uh, so Cython has, has become very ubiquitous uh, inside of Python. Um, so why? I mean, people like writing Python code. Um, they don't like writing C code, but sometimes you can't uh, avoid it. Um, and that's why they choose Cython instead. Um, why? I mean, Cython is, is, is basically a bridge between uh, Python and, and C, right? Um, C and even C++. Uh, what it gives you is it's a programming language. Uh, it's Python, so you can, can take Python code and Cython can compile it to C for you. Uh, but at the same time, it allows you to optimize your code. So you can use C inside of Python, basically. So it's, it's, a, it's a mix of both languages. And you can uh, choose to go down, step down to C at any time. Right? So you write Python code, but you can say, like, okay, this is performance critical, I need C speed here, so I'll just you know, use C, but write it in Python. Uh, so you can talk to Python uh, and C or C++ code natively at any time. You can switch between the two as you wish. It all looks like Python. It feels like Python, but you're free to use C at any time. So can, you can mix and optimize code uh, in Python, Python code, uh, specialized Cython code, and even drop in C code if you need it. It's a program language. Sorry, it's a program language. So um, it really has no limits. It is. No, as good in that respect as Python is, um, which makes it very different from any wrapper tools you may know, right? So any, any, um, anything that allows you to wrap some C code and make it available in Python, you know, they're just wrapper tools. They do it their way, and if that's not the way you need it, well, Cython is a programming language. It gives you anything you might ever want. Uh, and um, so the integration between C and Python is obviously done at the C level, so um, Python has a, has a or C Python, the, the standard interpreter, has a very nice uh, C API, which is 
wonderful, perfect. One of the reasons why everyone's using Python these days because this C API makes it so easy uh, to, uh, to pull in C code. Easy in the sense that it makes it easy to use that C code, not so easy in the sense that it makes it easy to write C API code. And the cool thing is, you don't have to, because we do it for you. So, um, Python supports C Python 2 and 3. Uh, it supports PyPy these days, um, getting better every time. Uh, it even supports Piston, so other Python implementations. And uh, that this is going to extend. So, um, if you want portable code, if you want, uh, want to write extension modules that work in different interpreters, in different Python versions, um, on different C compilers, different platforms, use Python. Don't write C code. Don't try. Okay, let's get started. Um, so, um, let's compile some Python code. As I said, Python can compile Python. So, let's just uh, take some Python code here. Um, stupid little example. This is a class. Uh, and a function, and you pass the function to the class, keep it there, and call it a couple of times. That's basically what it does. Um, okay, uh, that looks like, what, 10 lines of code maybe? If you compile it in Cython, you say, Cythonize, compile this file for me, and it outputs a C file with 3,700 lines. Okay, that's a lot. Actually, when I updated the slide uh, for the talk, it still said uh, Cython 023 instead of 25. And the number here said 3,300. So we added 400 lines of code for you in the last two releases. Isn't that cool? That's 400 lines you don't have to write yourself, right? That's 400 lines of code we wrote for you. Um, why is it so much? And there are lots of portability defines in there. So um, anything that adapts your code at compile time to different C compilers two different Python runtimes, two different Python versions, right? It adapts your code at compile time. Um, we can do that because we generate the code. Um, if you wanted to do this uh, yourself by writing C code manually, you would just, you know, would shut down and get nothing done, right? We do it for you. Um, there are lots of helpful C comments in there where we uh, repeat your extra source code so that you can, you know, it's generated code which tends to be difficult to read. Um, but we put your own source code in there so that you can see what happened with your code. You can look up a line of your code, see what C code we generated for you. You can sort of read that code. Um, and we try to keep it kind of readable. So if anything goes wrong with it, um, there are ways to figure out what you've done with your code, why it doesn't work, and so on. Uh, so it helps, we help you trace your own code in the generated sources. Um, and taking all of this together, all these portability things, uh, little optimizations that we apply here and there, um, all of this together uh, results in this huge amount of code. Okay. Um, how does it integrate? Uh, you know setup Py scripts? It's basically what you use for uh, building your software package. You say Python setup Py install this or build this for me. Um, and whenever there's, uh, there's binary modules involved, um, it'll call into the disutils infrastructure, into some, some standard library code, and, and build the module for you and install it for you. And we integrate with that. So all you really have to do is, um, in, in your setup function call, you say, yes, I have extension modules, and this is how you create them. So PIX is the standard uh, Cython code extension, and this tells uh, Cython, pick up any PIX module you find, compile it for me, uh, tell this users about it and have it compile it. Okay, so it's really easy to integrate into your workflow, into your installation, into your distribution. Um, for the more involved cases, we have to do some, some setups. Sometimes you have to uh, configure something, um, you know, in your C compiler uh, settings, you need external libraries, all sorts of stuff. Um, uh, you can use the extension class, which comes with, with distutils. I'll uh, configure it for you and pass that into Cythonize. Um, it's just a Little bit more involved, but not too bad. Okay, um, so much for the introduction. Um, now you know how to you know compile stuff. Uh, I'm actually not going to do that for you. What I'm doing, uh, going to do instead is I'll use uh, the Jupyter notebook and show you code because you know it's a programming language, so you want to see stuff. Okay, uh, let's start quick intro. Okay. Um, 
uh, to integrate with uh, Jupyter, you have to tell it that what you're writing is Python code. Okay, who, who does not know the Jupyter notebook? Like, no one, wonderful. <laughs> it's just great. I love it. I mean, it's, it's really great for presentations. It's, it's really great for interactive, you know, trying out stuff. Um, keep using it. It's wonderful. Uh, thanks everyone who cont contributed uh, to it. And if you feel like contributing to a project and you really don't want to contribute to Cyton, um, choose Lupin and Notebook. Wonderful. Um, okay, I just run this. Uh, so it integrates with Cyton. I just have to say load x Cyton and that's it. Then it knows what Cyton is, what it, uh, how to compile Cyton code for me. Um, I just quickly tell you what version I'm using. Oh, that's actually an old version. We just released 0.25 a couple of what, a week ago or so? Um, so switch to 025, it's much better, wonderful. Um, we're always getting better, like every release is faster and has more features and uh, backports stuff from Python 3. whatever. So we have a lot of uh, Python 3.6 features, for example, already in there, uh, and Python 3.5 features. Um, I'll show you a couple of those in a minute. And we backport them to every version we can possibly support. So that's usually Python 2.6 currently, right? So if you're still stuck with Python 2 and want to use cool Python 3 features, you know, write Cyton code instead. Okay, um, so here's a bit of Cyton code. How does that look like? As I told you, um, Cyton code is basically Python code, um, but um, uh, it has an extended syntax. So uh, in order to integrate C into Python, um, you can use uh, C declarations. <coughs> Okay, so you can declare variables as having C types, for example. Or you can declare C functions um, in order to make them callable from external C code, so as callbacks, for example. Um, so all of that is supported, and that's supported using the cdef keyword. Okay, so instead of saying def as for declaring a function, you would say cdef in, in, in Cyton, and then something becomes a C type in whatever way. So um, if you declare a Python function, add one, take an X, add one to it, this is a Python function. You can do that in Cyton equally well. Equally well. But um, here, uh, we are two numbers, and one of them is actually declared as an int, um, which in this case is a C int. So it's a 30 bit, usually a 30 bit, um, 32 bit um, uh, integer in C. And Cyton sees this declaration and goes, okay, I don't need to use an object here. I can just use C integers. And then it adapts your code um, to your variable types, okay? It drops the code in C for you, just by declaring a variable. Um, some languages call this unboxing, okay? So in Java, for example, you would say a big object here, unbox it to an integer, um, and it's the same thing we're doing here. So you uh, pass a Python object into a C variable and have it handled in C ways. Uh, double variable here, okay, I'm just gonna run this. Um, Okay, and the first thing you see, um, I prefix my cell here with Cyton minus A. Um, a means annotate my code for me. So it's um, ask Cyton to, you know, tell me what you're doing with it. Um, and it outputs my code as an HTML snippet. And it says, okay, when I click on this line, this is the code I've generated for you. Okay, lots and lots of C code. Stuff you don't have to write yourself. All you have to do is write one, uh, one line of code, okay? And it generates lots of code for you. Same thing here, um, generates code for you that adds two numbers, one of them is a one, uh, and returns it from the function. Okay, um, then I can show you that I can call this from Python, add one, it's just a Python function. I can do the same thing with a function that takes a C integer. Uh, you get, actually get, a, get an error if I pass anything else in there for like this. Oh, type error, okay, it's not a C int. Okay, fine. Um, but when I pass something that's reasonable input to the function, I get reasonable output. Okay, so functions in general. Um, this is how you declare a Python function, you know this. Uh, this is how you declare a Python function uh, with uh, C-typed input parameters. And what Cyton does there is it's just going to convert the incoming object to whatever you specify here. And you've already seen if you pass the wrong thing, if you pass an incompatible object, you get a type error. So 
what you would expect. And inside of the function, um, then site knows it's a C integer, I can do C stuff with it, I can do it fast, right? No objects involved. So what you can see here, when I compile this, um, is I should annotate it. Site minus A up. Uh, and then you can see here, uh, the adding actually becomes a C operation. So X plus one is executed at C level. Okay, again, I can call this uh, from Python, uh, gives the expected output. Uh, one thing I did here is I declared a function as cdef instead of def, which then turns it into a plain C function. And the C function is not callable or even visible from Python because, you know, it's a C function. I can call it from C, but I can't call it from Python. Um, so um, I can't actually call it from, uh, from uh, Python. It's not exported into Python space. But I could pass it into some C library, for example, in order to call it for me. And also internally, it's, it's faster to call, uh, call a C function than, you know, taking the Python function call overhead with double and keyboard arguments and so on and so forth. Okay, so whenever I need speed inside of my, my library, um, I can use CDEF function and uh, CDEF functions, which are then called at the C level. Okay, uh, calling C functions, speaking of that, um, this is how you would integrate with external C code. Well, there's libc, which has a, a math library, so math.h, uh, for those who've been writing C. And I can just, so Cyton comes with declarations for that and knows what math.h is. And I can just say from libc, c import math, so that's a, a compile time import. And then uh, Cyton knows um, how to call the, the sign function or how to look up pi in that library. Um, and you can see here, uh, it actually knows uh, pi translates to mpy in the, the math library, so it's a, it's a C variable. I can call the C sign function. And at the end, oh, I'm returning, I'm printing this, um, so it needs a, a Python object that you can pass into print, and it converts it into the result of this calculation here into a Python object and prints it. Okay. I can do my own memory allocation. Uh, I can call C malloc, uh, malloc free. I can raise memory errors at the same time, so I can really happily mix uh, Python features, Python exceptions, and uh, C memory uh, allocations, C functions, uh, any C-ish stuff at any level of granularity. I can really write C-ish code, call C functions, um, use C variables everywhere, and I can still mix in Python code, do Python stuff, call Python functions, use Python built-ins somewhere, or Python like whole modules from the standard library or Django or whatever, like call, just call it in, because it's all Python, right? It's, it's still, uh, it's, it's at, the, at the mix level between Python and C, and you, I can use both at any time. Okay. Um, I'm gonna skip over this. External libraries, you've just seen how to uh, call external libraries, here's a little example. I'm using Lua here. Uh, so there's a Lua runtime implemented in C. And, uh, well, there's a couple of declarations and I have to tell it, please link against uh, Lua library uh, when you build this. And then all I'm doing here is, um, I'm using the, the Lua C API, um, creating a new Lua in Lua runtime, um, load some, some Lua code into a buffer, have it executed in Lua, uh, check that the result value is any reasonable and return it. So uh, this is actually a complete wrapper for Lua and Python. Just a couple of lines of code, mixing Python and C, um, calling a, an external C API, and it allows me to drop any Lua code into uh, the Lua runtime, have it executed there, convert the result back into Python, and, you know, use it. So here's some Lua code. Um, I can run it, say, so it's calculating Fibonacci numbers, like the obvious thing you would do in Lua, right? Um, I calculate the Fibonacci number uh, 10, uh, run the code in Lua, returns the right result. Okay. Okay. We have a couple of nice uh, syntax features. Um, so if you uh, have, so Cyton is a lot nicer to use than, than C because of these nice features, okay? Because it's Python, it has a nicer syntax for you. 
uh, then C. It has, well, if you're dealing with C stuff, there are obviously pitfalls, the usual C pitfalls. We can't hide everything from you, but we can make it easier for you. Uh, for example, we have support for C arrays, a nice syntax for that, um, that allows copy and slicing C arrays. Um, you can iterate over C arrays with for loop in Python. Um, uh, all of this is there to make you know, your writing code easier. Um, one thing I really love is the integration with C++. Who here likes C++? That's about a dozen people where, you know, we have a lot more in the room. Um, so, well, C++ is more like you like it, some people love it, most people hate it. Um, and that's because it's a very broad and, and big and convoluted language. So it's, it's really, um, it's a really big language and I don't think there's well, more than five people in the world who understood C++ completely and know every feature in it. One of them is, um, yeah, uh, Janus Tustop maybe. There might be some others, I don't know. Um, now, using C++ from Cython is actually very nice because, um, you know, C++ is a fully typed um, uh, object-oriented language. Python is an object-oriented language, so using C++ from Python feels a lot like Python and it allows Cython um, to generate proper code for you by just saying, you know, this is how my C++ type looks like, and then you use it as an object in the same way as you would with a Python object. Uh, so here I'm importing uh, a C++ vector from the C++ standard library, the STL. Um, I declare a local variable as a vector of int, and I'm passing in uh, a tuple of values into my function. So this is a Python tuple of values. Uh, and then I take this tuple and assign it to the C++ vector, which means the values get copied over, okay? Converted to C into values. Um, then I can test for truth values. I can uh, do item uh, assess on the vector, totally as you would in Python. I can iterate over the vector, get C values back, uh, so this is just a stupid way of testing that the copying worked. All values I have in my vector are still uh, also in the tuple. Um, then uh, let's say I have, a, have a, some C++ function that I have to integrate with. Um, so I'm getting my values from Python, copy them into a vector, pass the vector into some C++ function. It processes it somehow, does some you know, huge processing as you would in C++, uh, returns something for me. Um, and uh, then I can take that and return it to Python. Okay, in this case, I'm just returning the vector I had, so it's, it's maybe it's doing some, some in-place um, operation on the vector, uh, and returning the C++ vector will just copy it back into a Python list, like the obvious Python representation of such a vector, uh, and return the list for me. Okay, so I have very nice integration between the data types in, in C++ and the data types in Python, uh, it's fully automatic um, for much of the STL. Uh, it even works recursively, so I can have you know, a vector of a map of pairs of something, and it's gonna copy that over into a, a list of a dict of a tuple of something, right? Just by return thing. Okay, so a bit of time left. Um, I'll just show you a cool feature that we added recently in version 24, I think. It's integrated with um, AsyncIO. Uh, you may be aware that Python 3.5 added uh, new keywords for asynchronous programming, um, async and await. Who has heard about that? Okay, who, is, who has used it so far? Okay, maybe five people uh, who would love to use it. That's way more, <laughs> okay. Um, Cyton has it, okay, and we actually backported it Python 2.6, uh, so you can use it there. I'm not sure that async.io supports it there, but if it doesn't, that can be fixed in async.io. Um, but at least the, the syntax feature uh, is available and it translates to you know, the obvious code that we would have to use in Python 2. Um, okay, same thing, uh, uh, load Cyton, async.io, um, just a little function that creates an async IO event loop, runs some coroutine in it, uh, returns the result. 
And here's what I'm doing. This is, who knows the FizzBuzz game? Okay, only a couple of people. Um, so uh, the, the idea is um, you take a number and you pick a number and uh, if it's divisible by five, you say buzz. If it's divisible by three, you say fizz. And if it's divisible by three and five, um, then you say fizz buzz. Okay, and that's it, just a little game. Um, so this implements it. We have a stream of numbers. Uh, that we iterate over here with using async4. Um, then uh, we actually data. Uh, actually, we have a data stream which translates into a you know chunk of numbers. That's how it is. Um, so imagine some some kind of network protocol, right? You blast some some packets uh, in there. It gets passed into integers, um, and you you say fizzbus for any of them. Okay. Uh, and this is what it does. So what we're using here is we're using, we're creating um, an async coroutine using async4 to iterate over the, the data stream. Um, and uh, this is actually using Python 3.5, I think. Um, but as I said, it would, use, it would work the same way um, in earlier Python versions uh, if you compile it with Cyton. Okay. Um, so get on with the example. Just some uh, code to get the, the data in there. Uh, creating some data, uh, and this is how it works. One, two, three is divisible by three, so we say fizz. Uh, buzz is five, um, uh, and then six is divisible by three again, so we say fizz. Um, now we can take the same thing. This is actually Python code here. We can take the same thing and compile it. By just saying, you know, this is a Python cell now, and no Python cell anymore. Uh, I changed the name to make it, into, to give it, you know, be able to use both. So it's compiled now. Um, still keep this around. Okay, now we can do the same thing using our Python function. Same output. Um, bit more data in there. Uh, and now I can time the two. Uh, here's the Cython version. Run against time it. Okay. And the Python version. Yeah. So it's it's about uh, one third faster, just by compiling it. I mean, it didn't change anything. It just uh, just took the the Python code, dropped it into a Cython cell, compiled it, and it's, it's one third faster. That's doesn't sound that much, but you know, if you can do one third more in the same time without really doing anything by just saying Cytonize, I think that's acceptable. Okay, a bit more data. Um, same thing here, same difference. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, okay. Um, only have a couple of minutes left, um, so I just stop there, uh, right there, and take questions. You imported from the STL the the math library and something. How, what uh, must I do if I want to import my own C++ library? Mm -hmm. So um, I had the, the Lua example here. Um, in the Lua example, what I did was I, I'm actually using an external, so I'm using the, the standard Lua interpreter. Um, and what I have to do here is I have to, uh, I have to tell Cython basically how the Lua API looks like. Um, so what I'm saying here is it's declared in some uh, header file, and what's in there is some struct Lua state, some functions. Basically, I can just uh, copy them out of the header file. Uh, it doesn't have to be complete, so it only has to know, um, Cython only has to know uh, everything it uses, or your code uses. So even if I, if I have a huge API like OpenGL or so, right, um, and I'm only using five functions and a couple of structs in there. I just take the five functions, declare those, and use them in my code, and that's it. Um, Python 3 is learning type annotations. 
yeah. and they use a different syntax than yours. Do you yeah. have any thoughts how that will work together? Uh, yes, I do. Next question. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I get this question every time I give a talk, right? Um, and the thing is, uh, um, yes, we could switch to the uh, Python 3 syntax. Uh, in theory, but A would not be nice, B it wouldn't help very much, uh, th three it wouldn't help us to compile your code better, so there are basically almost no advantages, and it would mean we, ha we would have to um, provide yet another syntax for what we're doing. Um, so I'm still thinking about it, but you know, maybe sometime. Thanks for the talk. Do you have any examples of open source projects which uh, switched from a regular Python to the Cython version compiled? Um, hmm. uh, yes, there are some. So what some projects do is um, uh, some write accelerators uh, for their code. Um, uh, meaning sometimes they just take the Python code, uh, compile it, and that's it. Um, sometimes they uh, take the code, drop it into some Cython module, like underscore same name here, as you would normally do with accelerator modules, um, and then compile that and optimize it, because that's the actual intention. I mean, compiling it is, is nice, and it removes the interpreter overhead, but then the interesting thing is really being able to optimize your code, being able to use C types where it's appropriate, make it faster that way, tell Cython how to properly optimize your code into fast C code because you know better than any compiler would. And uh, that's the usual way how, how you, you would do it. Uh, hi. In your opinion, in uh, which scenarios you wouldn't actually recommend to use uh, Cython? In which scenarios you would use uh, Cython? No, you wouldn't use. I would not use Cython. Um, well, uh, generally speaking, whenever you're uh, code needs, you want your code more dynamic than fast. For example, we are doing a lot of web development at Scooby. I would never write, uh, take any uh, like template processing code or so, um, or like any uh, database intensive code, for example, and compile that in Cypher because you would win nothing. 95% um, of the time is spent waiting for the database so um, if you make your code faster, maybe it's 98% um, in the end. Not in one, right? So um, when performance matters, you can consider it. Um, otherwise, have a nice Python code that you can edit on the fly and test with without compiling it is much nicer. Please, more questions. Anybody has a question? Nobody? Oh, pity. Okay, thank you very much for a great talk.